כן, אוקיי, סבבה, בסדר. אוקיי, טוב. Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, the wonders of technology, I'm in South Africa at the moment, so we're seeing each other on Zoom. Um, okay, so the last shiur which we spoke about was the how Tehillim represent the feelings of David HaMelech, even according to the narrative which we have in the book of Shmuel, we don't actually get the feelings of David HaMelech whilst he was in the cave. So let's just start off by, he wrote two Tehillim on this subject, two of them. Um, and the famous one is this one. Sorry, let me just get to it. Right. The famous one is the following. Maskila David, line number 19 in front of you. Maskila David biyoto bamarat fila. Okay, this is the prayer which David said in the cave. Now, we feel that David, in inverted commas, is going to be the, he's the victory, he's going to kill Shaul. But what does he do? He's scared. But on the other hand, we see here how scared he is. I'm crying out to Akrush Borchu, I'm praying to him. I want to pour out my prayer and all my troubles. And you know my ways. They've made, set me a trap. I'm surrounded by Shaul's soldiers. This is his feelings now. Look around and see. Now he's got 400 soldiers with him. But what truly does he feel? That nobody I can trust. Any makir avad manos mi many. Ain't doresh le nafshi. Zakte elecha Hashem. I'm crying out to you. Amati atamachsi. You are my, 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 the one who guards me. Chelki beretz achayim. Hakshiv elirinati ki daloti maod. Listen to my prayer because I'm very poor. Atzileni mi rotfai ki amtsumi many. Otziam mi masger nafshi. Take me out. From the restraints of my soul, in order, Lodot et Shmecha. Now, this is the feeling of David Amelech inside the cave. Inside the cave. And he feels helpless. And the only one who can save him is Akurush Borcho. Now, this is the two Tehillim which express David Amelech's feeling. What does Rashi say? Rashi says, Bamara, in the cave, Shekarat ba knaf ha-me'il, where he cut off the coat of the, sh of the coat, which belongs to Shaul. And this is what David HaMelech feels. Now, all his soldiers want him to go and kill him, kill Shaul. And what does David do? Now we're going to read perhaps one of the most um, heart- warming and it's you bring out the feelings of David Amelech and Shaul. Bayakum David Achrechem and David Amelech gets up. Bayetse min ha-ma'ara and he goes out to the cave. Bayikra achre Shaul leimor Adoni ha-melech. He says to him, you are my king. Bayabet Shaul acharav and Shaul looks behind him. David And David bends down and bows down in front of Shaul. Now, Shaul, in actual fact, is ready to kill him. And David Amelech says to him, You are my king. And he bows down. David And David says to Shaul, Lama Tishma. Why do you listen to all these people who are claiming that David is, wants to kill you? Why are you saying such a thing? Why do you believe in all these people? This is the day, your eyes have seen, 
נתנך השם היום בידי באמרה, הקדוש ברוך הוא gave you over me in the cave, I could have killed you, ואמר לו הורגך, ותחס עליך, and I pity on you, ואומר, and I said, לא אשלח ידי באדוני, I will never ever do anything to my king, כי משיח השם הוא, because you are the anointed one by God. ואבי, and my father, and now דוד המלך says to him, my father, see, גם ראה, את כנף מלך בידי, I'm going to show you that I could have killed you, כי בקראתי, בקורתי, את כנף מלך, ולא רגתיך, I never killed you. This is the proof, this is the testimony. דע וראה, כי אין בידי רעה, הוא פשע. I've got no crime, ולא חטאתי לך. ואתה צודק, נפשי לקחת, and you still are hunting me. ישפוט השם ביני וביניך, let God judge between us. ונקמני השם בימך, and let השם punish you if he wants to. וידי, but my hand, לא תהיה בך. I'm not going to touch you ever. כאשר יאמר משל הקדמוני, מרשעים יצאי רשע, bad things will happen to wicked people. וידי, but my hand, לא תהיה בך. I will not touch you. אחרי מי יצא מלך ישראל, אחרי מי אתה רודף אחריי. כלב מת אחרי פרוש אחד. You're running after a dead king, a dead person. שאול, you're running after a dead person, after a little, a little פרוש, a little uh, ג'וק. והיה השם לדיין ושפט ביני וביניך, וירא וירא וריבי שפטי מידיך. Let God judge between us. So what does David HaMelech say? David HaMelech says to him, I could have killed you, but I don't, because I love you. You're like my father. Why should I want to kill you? And now, Shaul answers him. Vayehi, kechalot David ledaber et advarim ha'el el Shaul. Vayomer Shaul, hakolcha ze b'ni David, Is this the voice of my son, David? And Shaul starts crying. You've given me a good feeling. And I've brought you on bad things. את אשר סיגרני השם בידך ולא הירקתי. הקדוש ברוך הוא put me in your hands and you didn't do anything. וכי ימצא איש את אויבו ושילחו בדרך טובה. Is there any situation whereby a man finds his enemy and yet lets him go? והשם ישלמך טובה תחת היום הזה, and השם should give you good things. ואתה הנה ידעתי. Now I know. כי מלוך תמלוך. You're going to be the future king. וקמת וקמה בידך ממלכת ישראל. And now I know that you're going to be the next king, but I want one thing. והייתה אישה ולי בשם, אם תכרות את זרי אחריי, I want you to swear to me you'll never ever kill my children. ואם תשמיד את שמי מבית אבי. וישבע דוד לשאול, and David swore to Shaul that he will never ever do anything. וילך שאול אל ביתו, ודוד ואנשיו עלו על המצודה. That, רבותיי, is the meeting between שאול and דוד המלך. One of the most amazing meetings which take place. דוד המלך says to שאול, I will never do anything to you. You are משיח השם. I will never do it. And Shaul answers him, you're like my son, and I've been pushed around, and I don't know what's happened to me. This is an example of somebody, so to speak, who's in absolute depression. He's guided by some spirit which pushes him on ahead, and he doesn't know why, etc., etc., etc. And Shaul has these emotional feelings towards David, and David has these emotional feelings towards Shaul. And this meeting is perhaps one of the most tragic meetings which ever take place in the Tanakh. Now, how does Shaul know that David is going to be the next king? And here we have 
a fascinating insight of Chazal. And Chazal say the following, and Rashi brings it, and he says the following. Take note of the fact that I could have killed you because this is the testimony, etc., etc., etc. And Chazal come along and say, Yadati ki maloch timloch. I know that you will be the king. Shero'eani, because I've seen Shakurush Borucho always sells, saves you from my hands. Umidrash agada. Now Rashi brings a midrash agada. Siman ze masar Shmuel. Shmuel gives a message, a sign to Shaul. Shakorea me'alav, the person who will tear his me'ilo, who will tear his coat, yimloch tachtav. If you remember, at the time when Shmuel tells Shaul that he's going to be stopped being a king, Shaul tears the coat of Shmuel because he begs him to stay on and he pulls it. Amar Rav Tachlifa, the Midrash says the following. Amar Rav Tachlifa de Min Kesari. Besha Shavar Shaul. Al Gzerato Shlakovsh Borhu Bamolek. When Shaul did not, when he transgressed the Gzera of Akurush Borhu. Uba Shmuel Bochicho. And Shmuel came and rebuked him. Shneemar Ya Nasheravat El Piashem Masad Varashem. The Kivan Shebikesh Lelech and Shaul wanted to go. Karalo et mi'ilo. Shaul tore the coat of Shmuel. Shneemar vayasev Shmuel alechet. Vayechazek beknaf mi'ilo. Vayikareya. Vayomer elav Shmuel kara Hashem et mamlechet Yisrael me'alecha. HaKosh Bochus torn the kingdom from you. Amar lo. And you will give it to somebody better. O Amar lo. Shaul said to him. And who is the person who's better than me? I'm giving you a hint. Who's going to tear your coat? Who atid litol malchutcha? You've torn my coat. Somebody who tears your coat. Miyad Ukshenichnas Shaul Lamara the Karat David Kanaf Milo Miyad Niskar Shaul Masha Amalo Shmuel Itrilo Marlo Yadati Kimaloch Timloch Maloch Baolama Ze Timloch Laolama Ba Shneemar Vavdi David Melech Israel the coat. The coat, guys, is the message. What does a coat symbolize? What is a me'il? Okay, a me'il, a kohen wears a me'il. Kohen agadol wears a me'il. A coat is something which you, is represents who you are. Now, one of the most amazing things in the Hebrew language is that we have got two words for clothes. Beged and Me'il. Okay? Both of them have an, a, an, an different translation. You have the word Bagad, a person who is a traitor, and ma'al, a person who transgresses. Clothes are the symbol of who you are, but they also are something which you can, which they cheat. There are many, many people who wear clothes, but they are cheating. They try to shmuchle you because you can't trust the clothes of people. Clothes are like a mirage. Perhaps you see it, perhaps you don't see it. They cover the body. And since they cover the body, 
do you see who you are? For instance, the word basar, the flesh comes from the word mevaser. You see a person's face, you see a person's eyes, you see his skin, you see what a person is. The clothes cover the basar. The clothes cover you. And when the clothes cover you, does it cover the real me? Or is it just who are you? And that's why the word beget or me'il represent different facets of who you are. And when David Amelech, when Shaul Amelech pulled the coat of Shaul of Shmuel, he showed who he is: impetuous, angry, etc., etc. And that's the way Shaul unfortunately behaved. He behaved in an impetuous way. He didn't respect who he is because a king has to think, a king has to consider, a king has to listen. And Shaul unfortunately didn't do that. He didn't listen to the real people. He didn't wear the right coat. He didn't, he wore the coat of the people and not the coat of Akadosh Baruch Hu. And Shaul tears the coat of Shmuel and Shmuel says to him, the person who will tear your coat, he will be the true king. Not Shaul, Melech Israel Chai Bakayom, but David, Melech Israel Chai Bakayom. And all of a sudden, when David comes out as who he is, he speaks to Shaul and he says to him, Avi, I'm not your, my, I'm, you're not my enemy. I love you. You're the Mashiach Hashem. Shaul breaks down. He breaks down completely. Just imagine to yourselves, Rabotai, a king crying in front of David. Because David hit him at the right spot, so to speak. He wanted to teach him, I really love you. And Shaul falls to pieces. That is the mifkash, the powerful, powerful emotional meeting which takes place between Shaul and David. And Shaul recognizes what a true king is. Not somebody impetuous, tearing the coat through anger, but cutting the coat in a plan to show who you really are. That, Raboisai, is the story of this meeting between Shmuel and Shaul and David. How David feels. How am I going to face Shaul? And David Amelech decides to face Shaul in the most elegant and regal manner. Any questions, any heyarot before we start the next story? Yes, Harold. Okay, so going back to this issue with the uh, clothing. I think that, I mean, the Torah makes a generally a very big point about the significance of clothing. I mean, all the way starting with, uh, you know, Adam and Eve. Oh, the exactly. And, and the big day kahuna. That, I mean, how many parshiot are there just describing the big day kahuna as something that um, is extremely important in terms of um, uh, a representation of, in fact, who you are in a very, in a positive way, not mm-hmm. specifically, not in a neg- even though you're right, the word beged, bagadnu, ashamnu, bagadnu, uh, is a, uh, a, a double-edged sword, I guess, if you will. Um, but clothes are a double-edged sword, a hundred percent they are. But I was just saying that I think that the, the Torah generally views the clothing as something very necessary and very positive uh, 100%. to know who you are and not a, a negative thing. True, true. I agree. But take the whole idea of dressing up on Purim. 
which is something it's the I same think idea. I don't do because I can't. You that. don't do it, okay? I don't think. Yeah. I'm saying, I, think but, I don't like that. But I'm saying the concept of how a person reacts, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, is often a function of his clothing. A person, right? And that's why clothing in the eyes of Chazal represent the honor of the person, who he is. Okay. And unfortunately, that can be a, that can be a failing also. You wear the wrong clothes. You're not wearing the right clothes. That is the story of the human psyche. Does a person wear the right clothes? And how many people have you met, Harold, in your life that you met them and you think to yourself, he doesn't write, wear the right clothes. Okay? Okay. And that's what happens here. That's why the Bagadnu, the Beged, has to represent who you are. But the Beged can also change, cheat other people of who you are. That's why the dangers of clothing. The well, dangers of clothes. Yeah, they can be used as a disguise. Exactly. I guess, yeah. And we won't give examples. Okay? That I assure you, you met people with frock coats, etc., etc., and you think to yourself, this is the guy. Okay? And in many terms, it happens. Okay? And that's why clothing has its problems. And the Chazal use it. Okay? The Beged, which is supposed to cover and care for the person. And in actual fact, they are a treachery for the person. You're wrong. Don't wear those clothes. They're cheating you. Right, and that's the word me'il also. That is the beauty of the Hebrew language that in actual fact, many times in the Hebrew language, you have the same word with multiple meanings. Okay, in, in most languages, in a lot of languages it is, but Hebrew is an example of that. Okay, so that rabotai is the meeting between Shaul and David, the emotional meeting which takes place, which obviously we know falls to pieces, yes. Questions. Yeah, question. Yeah. First, first of all, just a note that in most years, Pasha Tetzabe, which talks about the big day kahuna, is read on the Shabbat before Purim. Uh, Pasha Zoho, correct. Right. And but I was but I was wondering going back to the chapter, is David is David in essence cursing Shaul when he says, if you may Hashem take his vengeance on you? He says, if that means to say. David HaMelech Hasbechalin isn't cursing. If Hashem decides that you were wrong, then Hashem will have his own ways, but I can't do anything. I'm not willing to touch Mashiach Hashem. That means the opposite. He's coming to say, if you had, I don't believe you've got bad feelings towards me. I don't believe it. I think, and that's what he says in the first sentence. Let's take note of it, which is very important. What does he say right at the beginning? He says the following. He says, sorry, one minute. Uh, one minute. He says the following most beautiful sentence. He says, um, he says, Lama tishma, in line number 112. Lama tishma et divrei adam leimor hinei David mevakesh atech. He says to him, why are you listening to those people who tell you that I want to kill you? He says that Hashem should punish those people who are telling you all these things. Okay, you are being influenced by other people. And that's what's so happened. What's that's what's so sad. But whatever happens, even though they manage to convince you that I hate you, etc., etc., and you do think I deserve to be killed, I'm not going to do anything. I refuse to do anything to Mashiach Hashem. Right? But that's how David Amelech opens up. David Amelech deep down doesn't believe that Shaul wants to kill him. He doesn't believe it. Right. And at the end of this chapter, what happens? At the end of this chapter, 
or the beginning of the next chapter, Vayamot Shaul, Vayamot Shmuel. Shmuel dies at the age of 52. Everybody knows where Nebi Samuel is. And still, David Amelech feels that he's being chased after. And what does it say here? The Radak says, Siper mitat Shmuel. Ki efshar shemet Shmuel b'zeh ha-peret. Shenifrad Shaul mi David. He dies at the time when Shaul says to David, and the prophecy of Shmuel has been done in his lifetime, has been kept. At the end of the day, Shmuel admits that the Melucha is going to David. Shmuel feels, in inverted commas, now he can die because his prophecy has been reached. Umet Shmuel, and Shmuel dies, Shiva Chodoshim Nifnei Shaul. So the Radak seems to say that the reason why is because Shmuel realizes that his prophecy has been uh, accepted by everybody. But the Malbim doesn't say that. The Malbim says a different reason. The Malbim says, Kol yemei chaye Shmuel lo nigla hadavar she Shmuel mashachet David. The whole lifestyle, the lifetime of Shmuel, it was never told that he anointed David. Ki yare migle galot. V'shama Shmuel v'har geni. U'vemot Shmuel, and at the death of Shmuel, nitgala hadavar. O alidei Shmuel atzmo, perhaps now Shmuel told people, O alidei talmido achrechen. David David continues to be scared of Shaul. Over Od Asku, and the time when they were busy with Shmuel, David HaMelech runs to Midbar Paran. David HaMelech has this phobia also from Shaul. He knows that amongst Shaul's advisors, there are people who hate him. And because of this, David Amelech runs to the de desert with his guys. So here we have, but Shmuel never ever told Shaul that he directly anointed Shmuel, uh, David Amelech. That is the end of chapter six, uh, chapter 25. And now, I'm not going, I'm going to learn with you one extra story before we go to the period of the death of Shaul and the kina which Shaul, which David HaMelech says. But before that, I want to read one more story with you. And please, I hope that it's not bearing on, too bearing on you, but this story, which we're now going to learn, is perhaps an, another insight to the life of David HaMelech and the woman who he marries at this time. Now let's start off, let's start off something new. We're now gonna learn the story of Naval HaKarmeli. This is the next chapter in the life of David Amela. And I'm learning it with you because it's such a vital, vital lesson in life skills. Okay, now, all we're going to do is we've divided up the chapter into three parts. If anybody's learned it before, please excuse me, but I feel that I have to learn this with you because it's such an important part in the lifetime of David. It says the following, the Ish B'Ma'on, everybody, Ma'on is south of Yerushalayim, around the area of Yatir nowadays. That means if a person goes from Yerushalayim to Beersheba nowadays, and he goes through Hebron, from Hebron, you have two roads. One road, which goes from Hebron to Beersheba through um, Bet Chagai, 
and Otzniel, and the other one goes through Maon, Carmel, Yatir, and it hits the road, and it gets eventually gets to Be'er Sheba, more towards Arad. Those are the two roads which go south of Yerushalayim, past Kirat Arba, past Hebron. So we're now talking about one of the most southern points of the Ezorim, of the land of, of uh, Yehuda. The Ish B'Ma'on, Umasehu B'Karmel. If you look in a map, you'll see Ma'on and Carmel are very close. They're both two settlements in the area of Gush Yatir, Ma'on and Carmel. So he's a very, he lives in Ma'on and his business is in a place called Carmel. And the guy is very, very, very rich. The law, and he has some, he has 3,000. He has 3,000 flock of sheep, 1,000 goats, and he used to, by he, because there's et sono, the Carmel. And he used to share his. One minute, they're just fixing something in the house. I'll just go to another room. One minute. He wants a camera. What's that? He wants a camera. The inverter. The inverter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think so. I'll say that. Sorry, he's giving. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Sorry, guys, we're just fixing up this flat, this apartment, so all workers here. Okay, so it says, by he because this is Sonoba Carmel, and he was sharing his flock in Carmel. Shem Haish Naval. And the name of the guy was Naval. Shem Ishto Avigail. The name of his wife was Afigai. Now, the Ha'isha, Tovat Sechel, Bifatoar. His wife was an amazing woman. Amazing woman. But the word the Ha'ish is not a Vav Hachibur, but it's a Vav of the opposite. The woman is amazing. The Ha'ish, Kashe, the Rav. Malalim. The guy is hard. He is wicked. He's the swine. Naval, like a navela. For who? And he comes from Kalbi, the family of Kalev. Okay? This is the person who now David has to deal with. And what does he do? He carries on. Vaishma David Bamidbar. And David hears. In the desert. There's a chagiga, there's a ceremony. Everybody knows at the time of the shearing of the flock, everybody gets together and happy, happy, happy. Chagiga. Now, David sends 10 of his young people, his friends. Go to Carmel. Uvatem el Naval and go to Naval. Ushaaltem lo bishmi the shalom and give him a shalom aleichem in my name and say to him, Kol echad, let's have a good life. Vata shalom, uveitcha shalom, v'chol asher lecha shalom. Okay, everything is great. V'amarte v'ata. Shamati, now heard, Kigozim lecha ata haroim, asher lecha hayu imanu. Your shepherds were around us. They were the whole time with us. Lo echnamnu, we never shame them up. Velo nifgad lahem ma'uma, kol yimei otam bakarmel. And we guarded your shepherds. We looked after them, free. Free of cost. We didn't. We looked after them, we guarded them, we gave them food, everything. Now, ask, David HaMelech says to tell 
נבל. Ask your shepherds, ויגידו לך, and they will tell you, וימצאו הנערים חן בעיניך, כי על יום טוב בנו תנענה את אשר תמצא את ידך לעבדיך ולבנך לדוד. And he says, listen, he says, we looked after your shepherds, we looked after everything of yours, give us a bit of food from your ceremony. Pass back a little bit. ויבואו נערי דוד. And the lads of David came. וידברו אל נבל ככל הדברים האלו בשם דוד. וינוחו, and they stayed there. ויען נבל את עבדי דוד, נבל אנסל דוד, ויאמר, מי דוד? Who is דוד? ומי בן ישי? היום רבו עבדים המתפרצים איש בני אדוניו. Nowadays everybody is what? Goes against everybody. ולקחתי את לחמי, and you're going to take away my bread, ואת מי מי, and my water. ואת צפחתי אשר טבחתי לגוזזי, ונתתי לאנשים אשר לא ידעתי אי מזה אימה, and I'm going to give food, I don't know who you're talking about. ויהפכו נערי דוד לדרכם, and the people of דוד המלך turned around, went back. וישובו ויגידו לו ככל הדברים האלה. And he told them, they told him all what he said. Right. ויאמר דוד לאנשיו, חיגרו איש חרבו, let's get our swords, ויחגרו איש את חרבו, and his guys got their swords, ויחרוב גם דוד את חרבו, ויעלו אחרי דוד כארבע מאות איש ומאתיים ישבו על הכלים. דוד המלך gets 400 of his soldiers, 200 remain behind, and they go to נבל. That is the story. Okay? So, What do you say, guys? That's the story. David Amelech gives free guard, free uh, security. David Amelech then asks Naval, listen, I'm not asking for money. Just give my guys who helped you a little bit of food. Naval says to him, what? I'm chayev to you anything? Go to hell. Don't want to have anything to do with you. You're trying to shmuchle me out of my bread, out of my food. etc etc that Raboisai is the story and David is fuming at Naval's reaction right who's correct who's wrong what do you say well on the one hand you could say that David uh, kind of overreacts okay so this guy's uh he's a schmendrick uh but okay so but you don't have to overreact and uh, And, uh, and, and take, take up arms, number one, on the one hand. On the other hand, maybe, you know, in the con there's a context, uh, a, um, a, uh, a deeper context uh, with regard to the geopolitics of the time and the area that, um, uh, that the story doesn't exactly explain or elucidate in a uh, Beferish. So I don't know. It could be one of them. Let me just ask somebody. Uh, sorry, one minute. Dylan, Dylan, is the plan coming? He's coming to the Okay. Well, I'll be to the Sorry about that. Yes. Anybody else? So Harold says geopolitics, etc., etc. What else? Mitch, what do you say? You're muted, you're muted. David does appear to be overreacting, but on the other hand, he does feel that he has some justification. Um, I'm not sure that he, I, I think he went a little far. Okay. Anybody else, anybody else to say? I think that should have been a spot where the Rabboni Shalom gave instructions. The transfer of authority over the Jewish people that it's not fully known. And so the soldiers may have thought they're fighting for, on behalf of Shaul because 
because David was a rebel. And it, it's a very cloudy, it's a very cloudy business. Very cloudy business. Okay, now let's just try to analyze. Okay, what was, what is Naval? Has Naval got any chiyuv at all? What, what was, what does David feel in this person? Okay, now we're going to try to analyze personalities because that's what we're talking about. Okay, when we learn Tanakh, we also try to analyze personalities. Okay, psychoanalyze. Okay, one of the best examples of the psychoanalysis dimension is are the books of Avi, Aviva Zornberg, if any of you have read her books, which are amazing. Okay, the ability to psychoanalyze this situation. Okay, and that is Tanakh. Tanakh, besides being Kodesh Kodoshim, speaks about real people. And if you want to psychoanalyze what we learned before, the what, meeting between David and Shaul is also a sort of psychoanalysis of how people feel. So therefore the Tanakh is one of the first books which speak about analysis. And Tehillim, in actual fact, is a psychoanalysis of David HaMelech himself. When we learn Tehillim, and when we learn perhaps about David and Bathsheba, etc., etc., through the words of Tehillim himself, David HaMelech psychoanalyzes himself, which is the most fantastic idea. So Tehillim is a psychoanalysis of the person. Now, let's go back to Naval, okay? Naval has a terrible, terrible sound to it. We know, for instance, the Ramban uses the famous terminology, okay? And he says the following. He says, on the Pasuk Kedoshim Tiyu, Ulefidati, when it says Kedoshim Tiyu, Eina Prishuta Zot, the Torah warns Arayot, the laws of immoral relationships. Asurim, and it allowed intercourse between husband and wife, Achilat Basavayim. Imkim Yematse Bala Ta'ava, a person who's got a taiva, Makom Liot Shatuk Bazimati Shton Ashavarabot. Person can have a good time with many wives. Every night he can have a good time with he can marry 18 wives, 20 wives, and drink as much wine as he wants and eat enough meat. He can speak in the most terrible way. A decrepit person. So the word naval means decrepit. Okay, rotten, horrible. David Amelech uses it in Tehillim and he says, Lam Natseach le David, Amar Naval Belibo. A decrepit person will say in his heart, Ein Elokim, there's no God. Hishchitu, they destroyed. Hit Ivu Alila, they made up things. Ein Oseto. What does the Malbim say on this? The Malbim says on this about David, about Naval. Vaish haya kashe betivo. He was such a hard person. Ra malalim, the most terrible actions. Bitrunotav hamusariim, in his ethical behavior. Vihine, mishu kashe betivo, somebody who's got a bad nature but doesn't bring it out in his actions. Sometimes he'll be a good guy. And somebody who behaves badly, but it isn't in his nature. But how does the, the Navi describe him? Mitzad Shaya Kashe Hateva. He had a terrible nature. And this terrible nature was brought out in his actions. Lo Haitabo Tikva. There was never any hope for him. It wasn't one and another. He wasn't, he had good behavior, but bad nature. 
or the opposite, he had both. So if this is known about Naval, that this is his psyche, why does David go to him? He knows what an answer he's going to get. Oh, he knows what an answer he's going to get. He knows he's going to be thrown to the dogs. He knows that one tova, Naval won't react to him. So why does he go to him? Says the Malbim, Omer v'hu klavi. He comes from Kalev. Mitzad heyoto mishpachat Kalev miyuda shaya shifshot shal David. David thinks, correct, the guy has got a bad nature, but we're mishpocha. Guys, David and Naval are mishpocha. We're from the same tribe. We come from the same person. Everybody in the same tribes knows who we are. And David expects, Nachon is a bad guy. But mishpocha, you treat differently. Right. That is the expectation of David. So therefore, what ex manage expect management expectation exists here? What are the tzipiyot, the expectations of David HaMelech? The expectations of David HaMelech are mishpocha. Okay? There's a very famous story of the great Briskarov, and once, when the Briskarov came to Eretz Yisrael, uh, he, he, uh, he had his, everybody knows that he was a Kanoi. He was a big uh, zealous guy and everything against the government, against everybody. Anyway, once Menachem Begin wanted to visit the Briskarov. So they asked the Mukurovim of the Briskarov said, listen, the Briskarov, Rebbe, Menachem Begin wants to come and speak to you. Briskarov heard, Menachem Begin wants to come to me. What do you mean? Of course, he's a landsman. He comes from Brisk. Of course, I want to see him. We come from the same town. We've got memories together. That, Rabbi Isai, is the expectation of David Amelech the same tribe. What happens to David HaMelech? Nothing. Thrown to the dogs. Now, let's carry on. Okay. So you're saying that David HaMelech didn't, wasn't setting a trap because he knew what the answer was going to be. You're saying that, that he had heartfelt feelings that despite the fact that he knew, he knew what this Naval was like, because he was mishpacha, that that would uh, uh, yeah. that would supersede, you know, supersede all all the tchunot nefesh, all the characteristics. So in other words, later, we can ascribe to David Amelech uh, a not a malicious intent, but we can ascribe to him some kind of benevolent intent. Benevolence, exactly. Okay. Now later on, in the conversation which takes place between Avigail and David Amelech. Avigail says, says to him the following. It's in Pasuk Chafei. Al na yasim et nibo. Don't pay attention. El ish hablial hazeh. Now this is his wife talking about him. He's a ish blial. He's a rotten guy. Al naval. Ki kishmo kenhu. Naval shmo unvala imo. That's what his wife describes living with him. Now, okay, I don't mean, no, any very, very few women, unless they're divorced, unless they've gone through a terrible crisis, that she will, would speak this way about her husband. She is aware, ish habliyar hazeh, this rotten creature, naval, kishmo kenhu, Naval Shmo Unvala Imo. Now that's a powerful statement. Let's look at the Chinuch. 
The Chinuch, when he speaks about the mitzvah of Kibbut Avaim, he says the following. Mishorshei mitzvah zu. What is the shorish of the mitzvah of Kibbut Avaim? Shera'oi lo la'adam, sheyakir, v'yigmol chesed, l'mi sh'asa imo tova. David HaMelech has done a toiva. He's guarded the flock of Naval. And a person shouldn't be a Naval who refuses to recognize and kafui tova lacks gratitude. Shazu mida ra'a umusa betachlit. This is a most terrible, terrible mida, a lack of gratitude. Betachlit nifnei. So what does David expect? I know this guy's rotten, but a bit of chesed towards mishpocha. Right. The Sabah of Slabodka goes into this a bit deeper, and he says the following. Parshiot HaTorah Mi Chesed Avraham Suratam Shlemut, Emunato, his belief, Vamasim, Hembitui, Vitgashmut Atsura. That means the Chesed of Avram Ovinu is the story of his lifetime. He comes out from who he is. Umipnei Shehemin, Vaalaba Malot Emunaba Akara, and because he believed in Akurush Borhu, he did Chesed, Vishtalem Chesed. Anybody who's kofer in the concept of gemilut chasadim, ki'ilu kofer ba'ikar. So we have, says the Sabah of Slabodka, two people who are kofer ba'ikar. One who doesn't believe in HaKosh Baruch Hu, and one who doesn't believe that he should do chesed in the world. Naval, shelo asa chesed. Somebody who didn't do chesed, lo nikra ra achzari. It's not only called somebody who's cruel. Ela amar naval belibo ein elokim. A person who doesn't do chesed, and in the end of the day, who is he? He's somebody who doesn't believe in a God. Kafa ba'ikar. Mi pnei shekola ma'amin emunato, Anybody who believes in Akurush Baruch Hu, automatically it expresses himself in Chesed. Now this statement is the most important thing. What does is, what is the Sabah of Slobodka say? The concept of belief has to come out in Chesed. And if a person hasn't got any Chesed at all in himself, automatically that is a sign that he's got no emuna. David Amelech sees Naval, <laughs> and what does he say? Ein Elokim. Amar Naval Blibo, Ein Elokim. He refuses even to do the basic chesed to his family. And now, what does David Amelech feel? David Amelech is so, so disappointed, so, so angry, feels that this cannot, now let's look at it in this way, cannot be the relationships which takes place in Eretz Yisrael. So now, as you said, Harold, David Amel has got a debate in himself. How am I supposed to react when I see somebody and I meet somebody who can't express himself even in the most simple way. We did you a toiva. Do a bit of us, a bit of chesed. I'm not asking a lot. Just give the guys who came, 10 people who helped your guys, do them chesed. Right. And the chesed is because we're the same tribe. That, Rabboisai, 
is the dilemma which stands in front of David Melech. So what happens now? Now let's go back to the sentences. The sentences are very, very important. Okay. Let's go back to the words of David Melech in the story. What happens? He says the following. He says, sorry. He says, Sha'alna Narecha, ask your, your, your boys, and they will tell you. That means, give us basic things. Says the Malbim, a very interesting statement here. He says the following. He says, sorry. Hashelot. Where about is this? Line 75. Okay. Line 75. Hashelot. Says the Malbim, why should, why should they get Sakhar? So he says the following. David HaMelech says to him, listen, you've got a certain liability towards us. Because this party is Ba'avur Haro'im, and these, my boys, were part of your shepherds. Because they were also working. I'm not asking any food. Just give them. They helped your guys. We were careful. We looked after you and we never shamed you up. We helped you the whole time. Not one lamb, not one goat is missing. Kishmarnum, we looked after them. Milistim, from robbers. Umichyato, umichaito, teref, and from wolves and leopards and all wild animals. That means we made sure that your flock remained complete. The alze edim et aroimbatsmam. Your, your shepherds can testify on this, that we saved them. Shalit Narecha, go and ask your guys. Banu elav mitzad achanina v'achesed. V'zeh sh'amru v'yintzua narim chen v'enech achrei sh'banu ad yom tov. Sh'ra'u'i l'chonen et kol ha'sho'el chesed b'yom ahu. When you have a party, you let poor people come in to eat from it. So therefore, we're asking you, let my boys join in. Now, says the Ketav Kabbalah, an interesting insight. Ki lefi anir'eh haya ze chok lahem bimei kedem lekadem pnei hayeifim belechem umayim. People who guarded you and fought for you, you gave them food. Umal kitzedek, in the story of Sodom, yochiach shotzi lechem veyayim. That was, it was customary. You did us a toiva. Okay, we did you a toiva. You do for us a toiva. Right. And what happens? sleep. They didn't tell him these things straight away. They waited until this guy saw how many shearings he had. And the guy is blown. Why is Naval blown? Because he sees all his flock coming back. 300,000 sheep, 30,000, 3,000 sheep, 1,000 goats, everything is complete. And he sees that. They didn't tell him, speak to him straight away. They waited until he saw what he had gained by their guarding. 
ואז דיברו אליו כל הדברים האלה, שסידר דוד בפניהם, שהיה בהם פיוס הלב, דוד המלך זה שלום לך, קול לחי, אצטרה אצטרה. ועם כל זה, הייתה תשובה נבל בזה האופן, מן הקושי שנזכר בזה המקום. ויעץ להם, רוצה לומר, שלא די שלא עונה אותה מנה הטוב, אבל נהג בהם מנהג הווי, העייץ. He was like a voucher to them. הוא העוף הדורס שמנהג באכזריות. He behaved like a voucher. He behaved like a wild bird, etc., etc., etc. And he says to them in words, no other words other than go to hell. And hereby, David HaMelech has to deal with this situation. In the next shiur, we'll speak about what right does David HaMelech have to go out and fight with him. Okay, so this is a psychoanalysis of two people. David HaMelech feels mishpocha, a lanceman, Naval doesn't want to have any fear, any, any of it at all. He's got no relationship. He's got no interpersonal relationships. He just wants his money and his sharings, and he's not willing any chesed at all, even though that it's well known that people, okay, who look after you, okay, you care about them, even though they do it free. Questions? Anybody's got any questions? <laughs> Well, it would seem that if David Amelech is a God-fearing individual, as he is portrayed, that he would say, God will deal with this Naval in his way. You know, he's a rotten guy. This is, this is Bidei Shomayim. It's not up to me to exact judgment here on earth. Well done. Okay. Good. I mean, you know. Right. Very good. Okay. Leave it up to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Leave it up to God. Right. Because okay. he didn't, I mean, it's not like this Naval did his David any harm at that moment in time, right? It didn't, like, he didn't, he didn't kill, kill, uh, kill. Uh, the, he didn't the, kill his guys. He didn't kill off his guys. He didn't kill the messengers. He didn't harm them. He just said, he said, go to hell. Said, go, get out of here. I'm not, right. I'm not having any of this. Okay, great. All okay. right. So it still seems a little bit. Right. You know, not, anybody not else? That. Any anybody else? Got anything to say? I think uh, we're hearing a lot of PR. PR. <laughs> yeah. But it's 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 personal relationships, correct? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, the next year we'll speak about continue this, and then we'll see the amazing conversation which takes place between David and Abigail. which is one of the most important conversations in the whole of the Tanakh. So we learned about David and Shaul, now with David and Naval, and then we'll go on David and Abigail. Well, do you know have a good shot, is? everybody. Do you know when the next year is? Next Shior, do you know when it is? The next Shior, I was supposed to give, um, I think in the, in the middle of February, something like that. Okay, we'll say that. I think because I was supposed to give on the 27th of January, But since I gave three shiurim in a row, uh, Emmanuel's dealing with it. I hope they send on the Duff Makorot to you. To yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to email Emmanuel that... Uh, And I sent it twice. Harold, is my screen open? No, it's not filled. Uh, no. It's, it's we... been jammed. I've tried to hit it. I'd like to... Okay, it doesn't matter. I'm hearing your voice. Everything sounds good, Phil. It's okay. It Enjoy your good. stay in South Africa. We can no, hear I'm you. Gonna... We, can't see, we can't actually see your face. It says Fagy and Phil, but it doesn't show your face. You know what? I clicked the start video, and it just it always says you cannot start your video because the host has stopped it. You are the host. No, I've got nothing to do with it. I never, Phil, I would never stop you ever. No. I want you to know, and I would not talk to you without showing my face. That's okay, don't worry. Breakfast, but okay, have a good time, guys. Have a good Shabbos. Can you tell whoever runs this? that there's a problem with starting, opening the video. 
Yeah, but Phil, it wasn't that way earlier today. It just started. No, no, I saw you before. Hey, now you're back on. Hey, we are. Yes, it's, somebody heard us and changed it. Okay. Yeah. Be well. Right. Thanks very much. Look after yourself, guys.